Here we go. Targeted species for the day. Well, for our catch clean and cook, that is. A little small. I'll let this one go, but there's tons of them right under these these little tree props. Alright, we'll let this one swim away for another day. <laughs> you saw that? It was uh, tree I did the whole dangle. Came and picked it up on the tree. Here we go. There we go. This one will do for our dinner for tonight. Just can't resist this little one inch bait. Beautiful colors on them. Gorgeous fish. That is a big bluegill. Thought it was a tiny little bass. No, that's a nice. And look what nice he ate. bluegill on a spinner. On a big old Yeah, show him off. Spinner bait. Look at that. That is Jeez. one for the frying pan right there. Oh, he there ate that whole thing. Yeah, he, he swallowed it. that. He liked that. Goodbye. Look at that. That is dinner. Little Oscar. Wanted that little jig right there. Choked it. Way back there. Looks like a little Mayan. Yep. Put him in the live rod, David. Oh, it's puffing. Nice. Dinner. That's what we're after. It's in the box. Big old Oscar on a spinner. Big old cichlid on a crankbait. Smoked it. There you go, double up on crankbaits. There we go. Nice change of pace here. Got me a little black crappie. Not gonna lie, guys, my first one ever. <laughs> PB! PB! Yeah, I guess you could say it's my PB. No, but he smoked this baby rattle. Look at that. I know the canal that we need to travel down next time we want to go get dinner. Yep. A little spicy spot. Alright, midday update. Fishing the Everglades part two. Just sat down with Dave and we're eating. We're sharing a uh, sandwich. I just caught that nice black crappie. He just caught the pea right before me on a beetle spin of all things. And we're smoking the Mayans and the Oscars out here in this little cut that we found. Dinner. That he knows of. But it's looking good. Give him all this kid. He hasn't stopped yet. Oh, I know. <laughs> He's a savage. He doesn't want to take a break. Can't blame him. Hashtag no days Fishing off. Fishing is as hot as the weather right now. <laughs> but we're having a blast, guys. All right, guys. We are finally off the water. Four, five, five hours. Try seven. Six and a half, seven hours. I am a little burnt, but it was a great day. We have a cooler full of Oscars, my cichlids, bluegill, and the crappie. It's been a grind. We had fun. We are heading home now. We got a, about an hour and a half drive. And I'll catch you guys when we get to the house. All right, guys. It is the next day. I came back yesterday. It was a little late. I was tired. Um, I got burnt, as you saw. Now I'm wearing my long sleeves because it's just so freaking hot. But fish were on ice. We're going to do the clean portion right now. Let's get at it. All righty. Here we have our black crappie. Our Mayan cichlid and our bluegill. Start with the smallest one first. Always remember when you're laying small panfish like this, just be careful with the meat. It's so so soft and tender. It's not that soft now because they were on ice, so they're firm. But it's just something to keep in mind. I'm used to flaying big grouper and big snook. I'm just hacking at them. But with these, you got to be very very gentle. Just make your cut down the spine. There you go, 
episodes one. I fillet around the rib cage. You get a little less in the beginning, but it just makes it easier and you get your clean meat. I always leave a little little tab right here. Just makes it easier. I don't like using cutting board. Or I don't always have a cutting board available like today, obviously. I'm at my parents' house. We're here for lunch and I only have the angle with me. So do that to hold it. Pitch it down. And just let your knife do the work. That's how I said you need a very sharp knife. You just let your knife. Some people like to hack. They'll rip all of the meat on the skin. You just move your knife and there you go skin, fish, and your feet leg. Just come here, move your pin bones, there you go, fresh clean blue bill filet. Repeat the process. Also, a lot of guys hate filleting panfish because, I mean, honestly, that's what you get for a fillet. But I just am not a fan of picking at bones. That's just me. <laughs> a lot of guys like to see the fish whole and just pick away, not me. I like the clean fillet. But moving on, here's your black crappie. Same thing. Also guys, I like to use a real good flexible knife, as you see. The bend on this, especially with smaller fish, it's a lot better. You don't want a stiff knife because you're going to mess up the fillet. You're not going to get as much meat. So you bend it. I use my, my finger. You just bend it right there, push the knife, and work it. That's it. You got your skin. Here's your Mayan cichlid fillets. Alright guys, let me wash these off real quick and then we'll catch you guys in the kitchen. Alright guys, I'm here in the kitchen at mom's house, mom and dad's house, mom's over there with the baby. I'm not going to show you because she just advised not to, but I have the wonderful Jessica, my bride. Here we have our fillets. There's more in the cooler, but I'm just going to do the bluegill, the, to, the cichlid, and the crappie just to see. Over here, come on over here, I'll show you guys. I like to, since they're freshwater fish especially, squeeze a lemon. I do this with all my fish, but especially because they're freshwater fish. I wash them with lemon. Let the fillet sit for a little bit. Just gives that little, kind of cleans the fillet. Takes that gaminess out of it. I figured since I'm at mom and dad's house, I don't know if you guys know, but I am of Puerto Rican descent. I'm Puerto Rican Hispanic. So I'm gonna do a little catch, clean, and cook with tostones. For all my Boricua family out there, my Hispanic viewers, Jess is gonna get that started. Jess, here's your planting. Basically, tostones is planting, for those who guys don't know. It's like a banana, but it's not. It's a plantain. You have to do, you have to peel it, chop it up in little cubes, and Jess will, I'll help Jess with that. I'm gonna teach him to start peeling it. Chop the top, chop the bottom. And you wanna get the plantain on the, follow the lines as much as you can, just, just trip it down, there you go. Do 
do it on the other. You have to use the knife, right? Yep. You could do it on the other side as well. And just peel it. They you are can, quite firm. They are. They're very firm. You can do it with your... They do recommend you wear gloves doing this as well because it can tend to stain. Fun fact, if you guys don't know, doing it how she's doing it, she's... Butchering it. No, she, she's doing fine, but you will stain your, your nails. So what you can do is get your knife instead of staining. I'm get, just afraid of cutting myself. That's fine. Get the tip of your knife like that. To do this, this is how my grandmother and my mother taught me. Shout out, Grandma, if you're watching, Beba, si estás viendo este video, me has dicho que lo haga en español para que tú lo entiendas. And my other grandma in Jersey, lovingly, my brother and I call her Abuela Cookie, which cookie means obviously cookies, because she always used to give us cookies when we were small. But we learned these little tricks from both our grandmothers and my mother. But yes, my beba, how we lovingly call her. She called me the other day and she was like, Sam, I love your videos, but I don't understand what you're saying because you're not speaking Spanish. So, again, shout out to my Latino brethren out there. Beba, te para ti. So, we already peeled. Just can't see a messy kitchen as we're cooking. Me, I just throw it in the kitchen and she goes and cleans up behind me. I promise I do clean up, but it's just after. All right, you have your planting, cut it in cubes. Just can get me a bowl. Right there you go. What I like to do, also I learned this trick from my mother, is, and she's sitting here staring at me right now, but she doesn't want to be on camera. That'll be for the next video. You grab your chuck, Plantains, your cubes. Very pretty. Rinse them off. And Jess knows this trick too, because I taught her. It's not so much a trick, it's just our preference. Let your plantain soak. And be it that we're doing a shout out to my culture. Can't go wrong with Goya. and you just let it marinate. Just let it sit. That'll sit here soaking while we're getting the fish ready. All right. That'll wait for Just in the pantry time. All right, we got that out of the way. We had our fish soaking. Look how the color's already changing on them. What that does, basically the acids is somewhat cooking it. At the same time, it's cleaning it. So you just get your fish, dump it out. I rinse it very, very lightly because you don't want to get the lemon flavor off of them too much. But I just rinse it ever so gingerly. And being that we were in the Everglades yesterday, I just figured it was appropriate, and Robert Arrington, if you're watching this, I want to shout you out, brother. You hooked me on Everglades seasoning. Being that we were in the Everglades, I thought it was appropriate to use that. All I'm gonna do is extra, extra virgin olive oil. And just coat our fish. That's so that the seasoning can catch on to the fish. Coat it. There you go, look how beautiful it is. It smells amazing. It does. It smells very good. This olive oil is awesome. I love the smell of olive oil. And lemon. There you go. So that's all I'm going to use is some Everglades and olive oil.
Alright Jess, can you put about a quarter stick of butter in the, in the pan? There you go. Flush your heat not too hot because the butter, it'll burn out. Not sure of the measurements, but say about that much olive oil. That helps the butter. I'm not gonna deep fry it, I'm just gonna pan fry it real quick, but that helps the butter not to burn out completely. The pan. Yeah, the smells in here is phenomenal right now. Fish. And I did wash my hands several times, guys. Give these a couple minutes, turn the heat a little bit higher so it'll cook. You're gonna want to use a spatula. I don't know where mom has hers at the moment, but. There you go. Oh, this looks amazing, guys. Not gonna lie, I wasn't excited about eating freshwater fish, but the smells in this kitchen is ridiculous right now. All right, see if you guys can tell which one's which. Comment below, what do you guys think? How's that look? All right, now we're gonna get the totones going. You guys saw me fry the fish, prep the totones. They've been soaking for a couple minutes now. Jess is gonna actually fry them up for me and I'm gonna make the sauce for dipping the totones. All it is, get your, again, I love extra virgin olive oil. About that much. You get fresh cilantro and your Goya seasoning, again. Get about three to four, I, I'm using three because we only have one plantain. About three cloves of garlic. We'll get that together. For the tortones, you want to just fry the regular vegetable oil, it's black and olive oil, whatever you guys have. I wouldn't waste olive oil on that because you're just frying it. But while she's doing that, quick and easy way, just smash your garlic. Two things, makes it easy for you to peel, and the oils really come out when you do that. You don't want it to look pretty anyway. You're not going to stare at it. You're going to taste it. So you want to put these in the oil for a couple minutes. Make sure they're nice and brown. You're not trying to cook them thoroughly first. Or you just want to get them nice and brown, and then we're going to smash them up and finish them. I know there's better ways of doing this. I know, I know. But like I said, watching my grandmother's in the kitchen, my mother and my father is also a beast in the kitchen. He's actually, he's actually uh, grilling right now some meat for our, our family barbecue later on. He's out there slaving away. You gotta get the garlic. Throw it in there, then you get your cilantro. Try not to put too much of the stems, but the little stems, I don't really care because it's all getting chopped up. Just want to chop it real finely. Just how we doing over there? How are we looking? Good. Nice and golden. Golden brown. Golden brown. Take the cilantro. Throw it in your olive oil. I use that much, a little excessive some might say, but I just love cilantro and garlic and it's just the way I was raised, my uh, my Latin flair, I guess you could say. Get your Goya seasoning. Notice I'm not adding salt or pepper because this has a little saltiness to it. And you can also put this on your fish. You can put this on anything really, but we love to dip our tortones in that. 
Yeah. Let that sit. Quick tip, you can use what's known as a tostonera. For those of you guys who know, you put your plantain right here, you smash it down. I don't like using it. I just don't. I like using just a regular glass cup. Might seem a little ghetto, but it's not. It's actually really, really good. All right, Jess, you ready? Yeah. Just be very careful. Drain the oil out for us to smash them up. Alright. Get your tostones, you put it on a hard surface. Just get them one by one. careful when you're doing this. If you're doing it this way, because they can, what's that? Uh, just wants to finish them out. Just be careful when you do that, because they, like the first one kind of broke apart. One, I wasn't using oil or coated. Also, just kind of yelled at me. Um, this video is not sponsored by Goya or Everglades. Just saying if you guys want to, I'm not against it, but we're not sponsored. I just, these are the two seasonings I mainly use. One, like I said, Robert Arrington, you turned me on to it, brother, thank you. And two, I just, since I was knee high to a grasshopper, that's all I know, so. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right, Mom? That's it. All right, as she's doing those, I'm gonna take these. Again, just be very careful. I'm doing it like this, raw and rigged. I've just been doing it my whole life like that. And my father has done it since I was little, so. Just be careful. Use common sense in the kitchen, guys. Don't burn down the kitchen. Just wanna let these fry for a little bit. Flip them. Look at that, gorgeous. You want that nice brown color on them. have a really sweet aroma to them because that one's kind of starting to ripen. If they get too ripe, you can also do what's called maluros. I like them, but Jess loves them. I'm more of a Stormans kind of guy, but they're both great. Actually, for my uh, Latino and whoever, if you guys have, are familiar with the Latino culture and, and our cuisine, more specifically Puerto Rican island cuisine. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see a mofongo, shrimp mofongo or octopus salad. Our tostones, 
with our secret, not so secret sauce. And we have our crappie, bluegill, and cichlid. Do you remember which one's which? No? No. Good. Even better. Yeah. Alright Jess, I'm going to let you try the first one. Pick which one do you want to try? Mm. What's your honest opinion? What is it? How's the texture? Very good. Very thick. Um, very smooth. It doesn't have that flaky, fishy taste. Not fishy at all? No, not at all. So that was the my liquid that she just got. Very good. Try the bluegill. Uh, this one? Yeah. It's a little bit of a smaller piece. It's a little bite sized, but like I said, as I was cleaning it, I'm not trying to pick out bones or anything. Like it? Mm -hmm. Very good. Is there a lot of difference in the flavor or not? No. Um, because it was a smaller filet, you definitely can taste a little bit more of the lemon in it, but still very, very good, very smooth. That is a black coffee. Mm -hmm. That one has a little bit more of a, um, I don't want to say sticky, that's not the right word. Um, but it just, you, you, it has more of a bite to it. Like you chew, it has a little bit more of a chew to it. There you go. Chew sure. Yeah. Dip it in the sauce. But it's very, very good. Everything has a fresh flavor. I may not toss them back anymore when I go, so. And it's not a bad thing. I mean, it, they're invasive species, so you can go out there and tear them up if you want. I mean, we went out there and we got a pool to pool in an hour. So you're not even putting a dent in the population. You're actually managing and you're helping out the waterways. They're really good. Just gonna dip it. She's fancy, I'm not. I just dip it in there. That sauce is amazing. Try to flip on it. In the sauce. Simple, sweet, Everglades, olive oil, lemon, a lot, a lot of garlic for your sauce. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. I thank you for watching. Like always, like, subscribe if you like the video, thumbs up. Share this. Para todos mis latinos, para todos mis familia. Si les gusta este video, déjenme saber en los comentarios abajo. Le hago otro. If you guys like it, let me know. I know you guys. For now, you should see me speak Spanish, but yes, I do speak Spanish as well. But that's all I have for you guys today. Until the next one.